It now gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the Reverend Martin Junge, who is the General Secretary of the Lutheran World Federation. Martin is the first Latin American General Secretary of the LWF. He is a former president of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Chile. During his time as a staff person in the LWF, he worked throughout Latin America and the Caribbean on issues of globalization and illegitimate external debt. We are delighted to welcome him and have him bring greetings from the LWF's 142 member churches and over 70 million members in 79 countries. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Martin Junge. Dear Archbishop Fred, dear National Bishop Susan, delegates to this uh, joint assembly, both lay and ordained, dear sisters and brothers in Christ. It is my particular joy to be able to join you at this joint assembly of the National Convention of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and the General Synod of the Anglican Church of Canada. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Lutheran World Federation, a communion of 142 churches in 70 countries, bringing together more than 70 million people around the world. Just imagine the wealth of such diversity of people, of contexts, of cultures, of ways of worshiping, ways of serving. And of course, just imagine the task and the challenge to be together, to be able to talk to each other, to understand each other. What would be the center of such a diverse and multifaceted communion? Rather than the response being defined by a geography, it is defined by a message and by a vision which we hold together. The message is shaped by what we recognize as the core of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That it is not because of who we are and what we do, but because of who God is and what God does, that we are receiving new life indeed. It is grace alone. And the vision that holds us together stems from that theological insight. We are freed by God, freed to live and to work together for a just, peaceful, and reconciled world. Yes, indeed, it is about freedom. Not a self-centered freedom, an unaccountable and selfish freedom but a freedom that seeks to be expressed in relationships, in service, in mutuality. Hence, a freedom that knows about boundaries, which we are called to acknowledge today more than ever before. It is a freedom accountable to the neighbor. It is a freedom accountable to God's creation. This joint assembly is a source of great joy and hope for the Lutheran World Federation. And yesterday, many references were made as to what this assembly would mean for local congregations and parishes within this immense and so beautiful country, Canada. True, but there is more. Because what we see happening here in Canada between your ch two churches is also a great encouragement regarding one of our major commitments as a global Christian world communion, the unity of the body of Christ. What you are doing here in Ottawa, dear sisters and brothers, won't probably only go back to Calgary, to Montreal, and to Vancouver. It will travel across the oceans and do something in Geneva, in London, 
in Dar es Salaam, in Jerusalem, in Hong Kong, Buenos Aires. My presence here among you is not just about witnessing this historic and joyful event, it is about witnessing in order to be able to tell about it later on as I move on with travel. Since the early 80s, our two communions globally have been in close conversations which have both received impulses from local dialogue process and also offered impulses that have led to local and regional agreements between Anglicans and Lutherans. Today, we are witnessing here the implementation of one of those agreements, the Waterloo Declaration. I want to thank your two churches for the valuable impulse that this declaration has offered to our global engagement with the Anglican Communion and for the ways in which it continues unfolding its potential. Is this declaration applicable to other contexts? is the question which I have heard already twice during my short stay here. Well, I'm not so sure. Actually, the question, whether the question does justice to what the Waterloo Declaration wanted to be all about, because it was meant to be a response to God's call for unity in the Canadian context. For you, it was a matter of being faithful to God and at the same time accountable to your own context, your history, your present and the future that is ahead of you. Nothing more and nothing less than that. Again, again, even without a pretension of this being a declaration of universal applicability, which I consider to be a strong point of this declaration, I want to invite you to not to underestimate its importance for others. Because it offers vision and it offers direction for those who, as you, want to respond to the call for unity in other contexts. The Waterloo Declaration is valuable groundwork, groundwork for others searching for the gift of unity. The potentials that it carries were seen as the primate of the Anglican Church in Canada, Archbishop Fred, and the national bishop of the ELCIC, Bishop Susan, and the delegations went to Jerusalem last year in order to offer witness and encouragement to Anglican-Lutheran relations in the Holy Land. We are grateful for the leadership that you have offered in this respect. Now, 12 years after affirming full communion between the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and the Anglican Church of Canada, you are finding new ways to express your unity through this joint assembly. It gathers under the title Together for the Love of the World. This theme speaks to the fact that as you are here to celebrate and to share the joy of the communion between you and therefore rejoicing over another concrete step toward restoring the unity of the church, you are at the same time underlining your commitment to be joint witnesses in the world. By doing so, you are conveying in powerful ways that relationships in the body of Christ have their horizon in the church's participation in God's mission. The church, we heard it yesterday, is not an end in itself. And relationships in the body of Christ aren't either. They have their reason to be in what God wants this world to be. Unity is both an expression and a foretaste of the life in abundance that God wants the entire creation to enjoy. This theological insight is beautifully captured in the theme of your assembly, which reminds me of the title of the recent report of the Anglican Lutheran International Commission to love and serve the Lord. Both your assembly theme and the title of the report speak about love and connect love with service to our neighbor and to the entire world. In a world wounded as it is, 
and in a context in which God's creation bleeds and suffers as it does, I'm grateful for the direction that your commitment for unity is taking. Let me refer here to an agenda item of your joint assembly for which I am particularly grateful. You will be discussing about responsible resource extraction. Again, sisters and brothers, what you do here has an impact for what life is and could be in other corners of the world. On behalf of your brothers and sisters, which you would even be able to know by name because you are in communion with them, brothers in Peru, in Colombia, in Guatemala, in Ethiopia, in Indonesia, in Tanzania, I want to encourage you to take up the challenge to learn, to act, to advocate, and to pray by dealing with the statement on responsible resource extraction. You can make a difference. At a global level, sisters and brothers, we are moving to a new phase in our Anglican-Lutheran cooperation. When the new Anglican-Lutheran International Coordinating Committee will meet for the first time in September this year, it will concentrate on collecting good practices of Anglican-Lutheran cooperation and explore the possibilities to deepen communion in different areas. Be sure there will be conversation about this joint assembly. For us, as a Lutheran communion of churches, there is an important date that we are approaching the 500th year anniversary of Lutheran Reformation in 2017. And we will be talking with the coordinating committee about how to approach the observance of that anniversary in responsible ways. As a Lutheran communion, we believe that this Reformation anniversary needs to be approached in ecumenical sensitivity and with a sense of accountability. The Reformation anniversary won't become an occasion to undo what we have been able to secure in ecumenical dialogues and relationships during the last decades, but to affirm it. We want to be intentional in our effort to include what has been achieved with the Roman Catholics, with the Mennonites, with Anglicans. And as a Lutheran communion, we don't think this anniversary should take us 500 years back in history, but needs to take us forward. Hence, we want to see and explore how the freshness of the gospel that spoke then will continue speaking today and tomorrow. What does the gospel of grace alone say in times where everything seems to become a commodity in the marketplace? Salvation, human beings, dignity, education, health, water, creation, the air, the ozone hole. Is it really all meant to become cash? Do churches have a word to offer as the human family struggles with these issues of huge complexity that in many respects are becoming a matter of the sustainability of life altogether? Indeed, as we touch these ultimate and highly complex questions that we see, it is that we see that unity in the body of Christ does have a horizon that actually transcends the horizon of God's mission. Unity in the body of Christ has its horizon in the inside of our shared humanity and in the humbling insight that it is this planet, just this one, that is given to this one human family to live in. The together of your theme here, dear sisters and brothers, hints at this hard lesson that we seem to be refusing to learn, that we are one human family living in this one planet which we are called and invited to share. 
let me conclude my greeting by again thanking you for the gift of the Waterloo Declaration and for the powerful witness of this joint assembly. Let me share our joy with you because of the ways in which you are bringing so closely together the concepts of unity and service. Let me bring the challenge to you about our interconnectedness and our interrelatedness and what tremendous differences you and we can make by exploring further what to, together could all mean for your churches, for our shared humanity in this one world. We celebrate with you, dear sisters and brothers. We pray for you. We walk with you as you take on this new stage of your journey as Anglicans and Lutherans in Canada. Thank you very much.